Hello everybody, it's me Margaret. You've been hearing me talk about reducing my acrylic stash. Well, let me give you a little peep into it. Here is some of it right here. But wait, there's more. Over on this side, most of this is acrylic and it is DK weight or thinner. Uh, we have some cotton here. What is that? That's some 100% um, cotton, all the same brand, so that would make a good project all together. And this is some wool-like here, which I love. I heard they're not making that anymore. I could be mistaken on that. Got some Cascade Cherub DK up here, various colors. This is some, is this straight up wool? Yeah, this is Wool of the Andes right here. And then acrylic, 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 acrylic. That's a mix of stuff, ignore that. But now you have an idea of what's going on. But wait, there's more. We're now in the closet of the spare bedroom and we have the dark colors. I think you can tell that I kind of like to group things by color and by brand where, where I can. This is some straight up wool right here, but for the most part, you're looking at acrylics. And then above it right here, that's acrylic too. We have some bulky right over here in the far side and the rest of it is number four worsted. Now you see why I'm working to reduce my acrylic stash. So I stumbled on this free pattern on the Lime Brand site called the Stargazer Throw and I thought it looked like a great way to use up some leftover yarn. So glancing through the pattern, I see that they only used five colors, which I decided would be easily negotiable based on what I had available to me. And I remember, I'm on a quest to buy nothing and use up what I have. So this particular blanket was designed for a yarn that I've never purchased. Checking it out online, it looks like something I'd probably like a lot. It's a great color selection and I'm quite fond of 20% wool mixed in with acrylic, but I'm not here to shop. I noticed that it's a number five bulky, and since I have very little bulky yarn, I think I could achieve the same thing by holding two strands of number four worsted together. So what did I have? Well, lots of this black Premier Just Yarn that I bought in bulk a while back before the Dollar Tree upped its pricing. So I suppose that would be the main color, uh, black, and I pulled out these balls to choose from for the stripes or the stars in the stargazer throw or whatever. These were the ones I settled on, but notice that I ran out of that little bitty ball of blue and I had to open another skein, but it's the red that's a more interesting situation. Look closer. I took the red off of this DIY Karen cake that I made a long time ago, and I worried that it just wasn't enough. Now, after going on another hunt through the stash, I had no more of the original, but I did stumble upon its cousin color, so to speak. These colors are pretty similar, don't you think? Remember, I was holding two strands together, so I simply held one strand of each of these reds, and that solved the problem. Now, notice that the suggested hook size on the pattern reads USN slash P slash 15 or 10 millimeter. Now this is worth noting because that 10 millimeter size hook can be called any of those things. So make sure you check your millimeter size. In my case, my, my Susan Bates hook is called an N slash 15 10 millimeter. And it works beautifully with two strands of number four worsted held together. Okay, so here is the progress. Of course, I'll link this pattern below. Everything you see in color are scraps. All the black is what I had bought a while back with the sole purpose of putting together with scraps so that I could make good use of those. Now this pattern does call for some um, pom-poms, not pom-poms, tassels to be added to the ends. I'm not fond of those, but then again, I'm not keeping this. I don't like them because my animals pull on them and play with them and shred them and everything. That's my cat specifically, my dog doesn't do anything. But I, this, is, this is not gonna be for me anyway. Because I have animals, black is a horrible color because all the little 
pears show up so easily in that. So this will definitely be donated. But I'm not so sure I'm fond of those tassels anyway. So I'm still waiting to see, am I going to sew those ends in and then maybe put a black edging on each of the sides or am I going to add tassels? I don't know. And I think it's worth mentioning that all these yarns played well together. They were not necessarily the same brand, but that's a really forgiving pattern. So for instance, um, this color right here was Red Heart Soft, which is generally a lighter number four worsted, meaning that it's closer to a number three than it is anything. And here was uh, Big Twist, which I think that's a, is that Joanne or Michaels? I can't remember, um, a store brand. Uh, for that one. This was Vanna's Choice. This was Vanna's Choice. I can't remember what this green is, but it looks like a Red Heart Super Saver. And then this was Premier Basics, which I love. And speaking of Premier, the whole black thing was the Premier Just Yarn that you can get at the Dollar Tree. So, oh yeah, there's some regular Red Heart Super Saver mix in here. And I can't even Oh, this is a um, Hirschner's Worsted 8. So it's worth mentioning that this is a great way to let your scraps kind of play together in a forgiving pattern like that. Two thumbs up. We'll get back to yarn in a minute, but I wanted to give you an update on instant pot rings. Now, several of you mentioned that I should have separate ones for very fragrant things and then one for sweet ones, and I do. As a matter of fact, I have a link in my Amazon store. It's just for that purpose because I bought that whole set. Can you see it in the cabinet? Uh, for a really good price. So I have multiple ones that I can use again. But the problem is, is this one was still in really good condition and I don't want to get rid of it or anything, but if it's smelling very strongly, once you put them into your cabinet and close the doors like this, then once you open them again later, that smell of whatever it is you cooked last comes wafting out of the cabinets. And that's what I want to avoid. So how did leaving it in the sun work? You'll remember I tried this out a few weeks ago and I think I forgot to mention that I would just taken it out of the dishwasher. Now the dishwasher does help slightly, but not nearly enough. So after leaving it out in the direct sunlight for a few hours, I'm happy to announce that it worked beautifully. Now it wasn't like brand new out of the package smell, but there was just the faintest smell of those strong spices that I had used. I was really pleased and I'm going to do this again in the future if needed. But I also gave the lemon method a try. Today I'm going to put a cup of water and then I have these, this whole lemon actually um, in four parts and it just happens to be my favorite thing to put in these buy drinks. Can you see that? These are good and they don't have any yucky ingredients in them, but I like to throw an extra lemon in there just for some vitamin C and whatnot. So I'm going to use those and put this on for, oh look, I'm missing that. I need to go find it. Here it is, safe and sound in the dishwasher. I think I'm going to put this on pressure cook for two minutes. Uh, let's do let's do four minutes. I don't know why. I'm just picking that number out of the sky and I uh, hit start. I'm going to go ahead and let it cook and maybe do a slow release and see if it makes any difference in the smell of my ring. It's finished and here's what pressure cooked lemons look like in case you were wondering. Not too appetizing. I really don't smell any smell at all. I was expected to smell a nice wonderful lemon odor but so what were the results? I wish I could just let you have a smell but I have to say that it definitely did something. I'm not smelling any lemon. It just sort of erased some of the spicy odor that was embedded in it. But I would say that using lemons also helps to eradicate some of that odor. Vinegar's not my favorite, but so far the sun and lemons do. And guess what? The sun is free. So now let me tell you the story of my first attempt at making roasted seasoned chickpeas.
Now, most recipes you see start with canned chickpeas, but be sure to read the labels. Most of those contain very high sodium content, plus some chemicals that you don't want, although there are some brands that are definitely good choices. But dried beans are only that beans and as a bonus they're cheaper however they can be time consuming to prepare heat and soak or overnight soak and then cook on the stove for hours unless you have a pressure cooker which speeds up the process greatly first you check them out you're looking for any yucky ones or even rocks that can show up from time to time give them a rinse Dump them in the pressure cooker and cover with water. You're going to need at least one inch over the top of the beans. Then you pressure cook on high for 50 minutes and go about your business. When the timer goes off, let them sit there for about 15 more minutes and then release the pressure and drain. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but I just love this thing. As opposed to using a big strainer or something, you just clip it on like that. You see? And... This keeps your beans from falling out while you strain it. Oh, and this goes in the dishwasher. And it's silicone, so it handles the heat really well, and of course, the dishwasher as well. Now here's an important note. I happen to cook the whole bag, but you don't have to if you don't want to. I'm gonna link this handy chart in the description box below. I'm taking some of these out to be used as a salad topping, but then the rest of them I'm going to roast to be used as snacks. So I hope that turns out okay. All right, let's look at this mess and see how it's going to progress. I used my Yeti to measure because all the recipes I found online use canned chickpeas and I don't want to use canned chickpeas. So I used this to scoop out because I figure it's wider than, than this is, but I could kind of gauge how much I was putting in there. So that's, in my world, one can of chickpeas. Okay, so then I put it in there and I added the seasoning. I did the lighter version first, which called for just smoked pap paprika and some olive oil. And then I did uh, a more complicated version over there. I altered my recipe and you can't taste what it's gonna be anyway. So basically just go online and find recipes that sound good to your taste buds. Now I also used olive oil. Uh, I use an inexpensive olive oil because when you cook, and add heat to olive oil, you break it down. So all the things in it that are good for you are actually going to be broken down because it has a very low heat point. So in this case, when we cook with it, I just use something inexpensive and I save my nicer olive oils for things like salads and whatnot. And of course, I'll, I mean, olive oil is just an option. It's what's suggested. Uh, avocado oil would be a good choice and it has a much higher heat point. So you know, use your good sense and what you know and what you like. If you have a convection setting, use that. Using two rows, it helps the air to circulate throughout the oven. If not, you'll have to rotate or maybe cook one pan at a time. Overall, the end result was just okay. My taste buds require a much heavier hand with the seasoning ingredients, so I'm gonna remember that for the future and the toastier the better so i prefer this batch that has more browning the ones that looked burned are actually globs of seasoning so those are my favorites definitely a good experiment and i will do it again and now back to yarn i wanted to give you a little update on how this hat turned out and i was in the process of making it last time and i wasn't sure if it was very busy <laughs> Well, it turned out that the way I did it, it's a striped hat. And I'm wondering now if it wouldn't look better if I changed colors over the previous color so that it might be more of a checked hat. I don't know, but that's just another thing to try. Essentially what I did was one half double crochet and then I switched colors, you know, ending with the, the next color, you know how you do that. And then I just did a basic little uh, front post double crochet or half double crochet ribbing down here at the bottom but all in all I think it turned out really well and this was yarn that DK weight yarn that I got from oh I think it was Big Lots and I'm talking years ago like 10 years ago I have a lot of it 
and I want to put that to good use. It feels so good, but when it after it's washed, it's a really, really nice acrylic, and it is a 100% acrylic yarn. That's really what I'm trying to work on right now is my acrylic stash, and I'm doing a good job, slowly but surely. <laughs> I've got some good news and some bad news. So using those scraps that I had for the blanket, I said, okay, let's put those to good use in some hats for donation projects. So I managed to get these three done. I'm in the process of doing a fourth. And yet here is the yarn that I had originally pulled out to use in that blanket. And it looks like I've hardly put a dent in it at all, doesn't it? <laughs> Here I have used um, all of the, I didn't use this in the blanket, but it was just a small bit and I used all of it in the creation of this ribbed hat that I'm working on here. And then all the rest of them, you know, I have used in some of these other hats, but it just dwindles so slowly. So that's good news in that you can get many different charity hat projects out of your acrylic ends as I've done so here but the bad news is is that I was hoping to clear all this out in a hurry but <laughs> it tends to go on and on and on you can see how much it has dwindled in uh, some of these these little balls that I had so it you know I'm making progress on it that's the truth and here's a use of yarn scraps that isn't very unique. We've talked about this before, but I happened to see them in Walmart and it sparked my memory. I don't think I would pay $8 for this, clearly not because I can actually make my own if I wanted to, but they tear up so easily when your cat plays with them. So, um, you know, that wouldn't last very long. So notice that some of them even are merely wrapped, not even knitted. So there's that but thought i'd mention it and if you're new to my channel you may not know that i've already devoted two videos to yarn scraps tips and ideas uh, this one here on the bottom yarn scraps tips and ideas has loads of information and project links too and as a matter of fact i pulled this up just yesterday to reference some of these links for myself I'm going to sign off now, but be sure to check the description box or the show more area or whatever it's called these days for any links that I mentioned that may interest you. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.